Hi everyone, hi Dom and the team for the hair show. Uh, I'm JB here, JB Mazena, and we are here together in our brand new studios, which I'll talk a little bit later basically about what this studio is for, but we started a brand new online dedication. But here we're together today, I'm absolutely thrilled to be invited by Dom and the team to do this master's work. I've been listening to all those amazing podcasts during the actual lockdown and it's been absolutely phenomenal. So I'm very humbled to be part of this. So what I'm going to showcase for you today is they've been asking to actually work on like more of an iconic look. I think for me personally, we're far from um, being iconic as a company, but there's a few nice uh, haircuts that I really, really liked. And I think, you know, it's been for a while that we've been working on the idea of brushing the hair kind of like off the face and having a little bit more of, I would say, uh, editorial look and editorial feel to the hair. So I want to go back with something a little bit more blunt today. So there's a look that we've done from a collection called Fitz, which was not one of our best collection, actually, uh, if I look at the time. But there is one haircut on the model that's called Stephanie, who also used to be our clothes designer. That was really, really interesting. It was all about a very, very bold advisory shape, slightly asymmetric from the front, working with two different sides around the sideburns areas, and then a beautiful little graduated shape towards the back. So this is what I'm going to do for you today, which is slightly different. And then please let me know, give me some feedback. I hope you enjoy it. And I'm gonna run through now all the section. So in terms of the actual section, what we have is we have a section running through the side. You have a section all the way from behind the ear going towards the other side. So this one is quite balanced. But then the two section on the front area, one is slightly longer, one is slightly narrower. So we'll see the narrow one on one side, which is just below the top of the ear. And then on this side here, it goes a lot deeper. It's going to be two very different sections. Now, towards the back, we have one section on top on either side, and also in here, we've got all the lower parts just going, just going down. The idea here is very simple, is to actually split the top into two. We're gonna create this very beautiful, tailored, graduated feeling, but going quite high. So here, instead of going for a very, very low graduation, we're actually going to go for something a bit higher to compensate a flatter area around the crown, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna start all my sections, but before, I wanna tell you a bit more about how the hair was prepared. So in here, to prepare the hair, what we did is we worked with Kerasilk, so Kerasilk color, started with shampoo and conditioner. This is extremely important to really keep this very nice, gorgeous shine into the hair. So now, I'm gonna start my section number one, going through the middle. Let me get my first section here. And I'm gonna talk about why I chose this section, and then also, the difference that we can do to actually potentially create variations on that technique. Now, I'm filming here in the middle of the afternoon on the hottest day of the year. I am absolutely dying. <laughs> so, first section, I'm gonna go for something vertical. Now, what's very important here is always using a good amount of water into the hair, so now I'm gonna get this closer so you can see better here. I'm going now to pre-cut some of this hair, okay? There's no need to do too much on this. I'm gonna bring it slightly forward and a little bit higher. Now I'm gonna get the doll to the profile so you can see more of my elevation. So in here, what I'm going to do is my section is at that level. So everything that's on that section and going above that section will remove weight. But in here, everything that's lower than the section and the lower I go will build weight. So here, I'm gonna create a graduation, but I'm not gonna go for something which is basically too low because the weight will sit too low and that's not gonna counteract the flatness of the shape 
of the crown. So in here, I'm gonna grab the hair. I'm gonna go much, much, much higher. And you see from the elevation here, this is my section, just a little bit lower. You can see, just slightly lower. Bring the hair up, and then I cut. Now what's important also is I want to leave a little bit of length in the outline. Now why am I leaving a bit of length in the outline? This is because in, on a doll head situation, it's very jumpy. So if the outline is too jumpy, what would actually happen is if I go too short, it's going to be very difficult for me to be able to do anything with it. So in here, you see, I've got almost like an inch and a half. So when this is falling here, I've got a nice movement in the shape, but enough length in the outline to be able to create after different type of shape when the hair is dry. So we can keep it soft or we can make it a little bit more blunt, yeah? So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually move from the center going towards the side. So in here, the idea is to work with vertical section, but I'm gonna actually create a rounder shape. So each of my section will move and will be cut onto its base, okay? So again, same thing, I'm gonna pre-cut what I don't need. I bring the head slightly lower so it's more comfortable for me. Then now I'm gonna push the comb towards that direction, towards you. So in here, the guide is gonna be pushed into the new one, yeah? So each section here are going forward. So going that way, you can see exactly where I am. I lift the hair with the same elevation. I can see my section and I cut. So when I bring this down here, I always check if I have the same length, and then when I bring the hair out, I have the same length all the way through, okay? So now I'm gonna to go towards section number three. Little bit of pre-cut, same way, I push now that guide, I bring it over, I know exactly where I am towards my elevation, and then I cut. It's an absolute crazy heat today. Wow. Always see where the hair is going. I need to check where the top goes here. And here I can see I've got a nice movement running through. So if in here it becomes a little bit longer, it means that we had a wrong over direction. So in here it's not really to over direct the hair, but to really go with the head shape. And I carry on. Really liking the shape it starts to create at the moment, right? Just a nice round shape from the front to the center to the side. See, so very important as well. Keep a very, very strong moisture hair at all time here. Otherwise, you lose the tension. the head slightly up. Again, I remove the excess of hair that I do not need. And again, the hair goes straight out, up on its base. This is something that particularly for me, I found 
very, very difficult. I've always kind of felt that working with another direction is slightly easier to control as we all we almost always know where we are bringing the hair to. In here it's kind of slightly harder each time because you need to really go with the rounding of the hair. Again, same thing. Always, I could keep everything, but I find it very difficult to comb otherwise. Those hair on those dolls um, are extremely difficult uh, into the ends. You know, they just get very, uh, very hard to comb. They go nutty very quickly. So I think that's why it's easier if you remove the extra excess that you don't need before you cut. The doll head company that we've been using for many years now is called Exalto. It's a very, very, very good brand of dolls. You know, it's absolutely amazing. And this particular model here called the Mila, I think for me it's the best one they have. It's really, really good. Now it comes in a very, very light blonde, so you need to kind of color it, but it works very well with colors. I think it must have been not last Salon International, but the one before, so yeah, probably two and a half years ago from now, we actually did a collaboration with Goldwell in Salon International and we had all the uh, all our colored doll head over there in the stand, which was really nice actually, really, really nice. Let me see if I can bring this here. Oh. Perfect. Oh. See, I don't need the whole thing each time. Just one that I push. So now I'm going here, up, and this comes this way. Straight out. I can see the shape. And I cut. Very nice movement into the hair here, which is nice. I'm always combing towards the new section. This is a very, very important part. I'm arriving now to my last section. A little bit more water again. See, I take the one that I don't need anymore, I push it to the side and then I push the hair towards, straight out of my last touch. Here when the hair is falling, I am not building any more length here, I'm actually going around following the head shape. So, grab the hair now. I'm gonna do a nice little cross check, just to be sure that I have the right length. In here it's important, you can just remove a little bit of it. I mean, if you've got too much to remove, it's because Somewhere along the line, a mistake's been made. But in here, oops, my comb's gone. It was just very, very soft. Oh, grab my comb. Happens. So it's got a really, really cool shape already. Very nice and very soft. So now I'm going to do it, I'm going to move towards the other side. So I'm doing a lot of water. I'm going now to push the hair towards the other side here. This 
way. Pre-cut. Up. And now the comb is gonna go towards the other way. So here I grab the actual guide and then I'm gonna push it to the next one. So all the hair here that I do not need in that area is gonna be pushed towards the other side. So now grab this way here and I'm just gonna push my guide to the new one. Get the guide to the new one. You can see my guide really well. And I cut. Always a little bit more difficult from one side. We always feel more comfortable to one side to the next. I just have to always be very, very careful of what we're doing. See so in here just to check that I've got the right length. And I carry on. Always pre-cut, makes it a lot, lot, lot easier. Going when it falls, Very nice, and I can. Always find this area here the hardest. I find it quite difficult because of the body position and then also the fact that there's the largest amount of hair in the nape area. Oh, and I'm cross-checking. Just want to make sure exactly I'm going nicely around the head. It's looking good, I'm happy. Carry on. So you see so far, everything that I've done has been very, very repetitive, but I think this is very much the importance of working with precision cutting is to know where to start and to exactly know where you end and then keep a consistency throughout what we are doing. You can see the way the shape is processing. And I'm moving towards the last two, so I can move the head up a little bit. So obviously here my body position is not correct, but I need to be in a certain angle for you to be able to see what I'm doing. And my last one. See how the hair is going. Checking and processing my shape. Now, what I'm going to do is a good cross check on both sides. Any little pieces of hair I can trim, stay light actually. So, cross checking, of course, going opposite of where I cut. Check on 
this other side. Nice. Nice. all the way to the other side here. So, this is the shape that I have for the moment. we put this straight. So, we started working with the center and we just basically moved vertically all the way to the side, okay? I'm going to grab the actual phone now and take you through the drawing section so we'll see the elevation and how we draw. So in here, section number one, on the base, in the middle. And what we've done is we went all the way using vertical section and going all the way around, okay? So really here moving around the head. So if you look at this area here, if you have this length onto the, the center, it would be the exact same length we have onto the side. So we kept the same length all the way around. In terms of the elevation, so this is our section here. So what we did is we actually just went below and keep a little bit more of length into the outline. This is to help us to actually create a little bit more softness as the hair is going to fold because we're going to create stronger outline afterwards. Okay, so from the center to the side, going around the head on both sides and then quite a flat angle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to release those two sections at the top. So I use a lot of water. Very, very important. I drop those section here. Everything is going down on either side. I'm going to start to take section number one into the middle. So making sure the head is straight. Section number one is into the center. Push the hair nicely into either side, so it's very, very neat. Be careful here with the clips on the way, I just remove it. So now, this section is actually too big for me to cut for on the first go. So I'm going to remove now just half of it, just for now. And I'm going to grab my scissors. So in terms of the scissors, I'm using a very, very beautiful one, which is called Swords SP Slim by Mizutani. It was absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous scissors. So fine and super, super pointy and it's just really really gorgeous so now again from here i'm going to remove what i don't need i'm going to move towards the side it's easier for me to be able to create my section i can see exactly here where my old section was but instead now of dropping tool i want to keep it quite high the idea is to go against the actual rounding of the head and not going for a graduation that's too low. This is, I think, what's been happening too much in the past. And, you know, we tend to think and believe that graduation has to match a certain degree of elevation. So most of us have been taught that it's 45 degree angle. Well, 
Not necessarily, right? Because what's happening between 45 to 90? What's happening towards 45 to zero, okay? Well, basically, the more I go up, the flatter I'm going, the lower I go, the heavier I'm going. So in here, I really want to create a graduation which is actually quite flat. So this is why, you see here, I keep on a higher elevation. And I keep the exact same shape. Now I have a tremendous amount of hair at the top. This is very often what happened with the doll head. The way that they, um, they stitch the hair is very coarse in here. So, you know, I usually what I do is I cut it that way, I see how it falls, and then I can make a decision later if I want to remove the weight even more. So now, what I'm going to do is it's the same. The move vertically around the head to do exactly the same thing. So I'm not going to create sections that are pivoting. This is not a pivoting section here. I'm not doing this. I'm just following the head shape. Yeah? So instead of doing that, I'm still going with it. Okay? Pre-cut, bring the hair, remember exactly where it was cut. So now, if I want to at this stage, look what I'm doing, I'm switching to the large side of my comb. Why do I switch to the large side of my comb? Well, very simply because there's a lot more hair to deal with, which I find a lot harder. So with the fine side, it would just create too much tension and too much complication in terms of the tension. So switching to the large side makes it a lot easier and I carry on so I do not know if you can see at this stage but it's almost like a little weight line here building this is totally created by the thickness of the hair of that top so this will deal with it a little bit later and I carry on so you see again grab the hair pre-cut what I don't need and I move on. Large side of my comb, nice tension and I cut. And again, so just moving nicely around the head. I'm going to bring more water into it. I'm almost there. So I'm going to split that last section into two. Much easier, I think, when I've got less hair to deal with. And finally moving on to my last section. So now you see I'm totally again, straight out of my section here. start to see now the weight line towards that area so because of how thick the hair is towards the top I'm going to cross check the hair now but I'm going to use outside of my fingers to have a little bit more tension I would say but also control here of elevation so I'm grabbing the hair and this is here where I'm really cautious of a lot of tension and just make it as clean as I can on that area. So 
So again, here cross checking really not about recutting, but very much so about just dusting the shape of the hair. It's always a bit harder sometimes to see the shape, how it's falling and processing on red hair like this on a doll, but this is something that you know, we will need as well to check when the hair is going to be dry. The lower part, same, lots of tension. It's always making sure it's nice and clean. And until we get to the last part, again, if it's straight out towards the back area here, it's good. Nice. And now I'm going to go towards the other side, in exactly the same. Start moving the hair into the side. You see the hair is drying really quickly. This is due to uh, having the air come right on me because it's so warm. So again, snipping the hair that I don't need. Starting towards the top area. I can see my guide. And the hair that I don't need, I don't need to keep it. Oh. See my connection here. And I connect. And I'm going to leave. Each time, this is extremely important, we need to move either the doll head, our client, or the body position. We really go always following the head shape. Stick what I don't need. Again, not taking too much of a guide. Pull the hair towards the section straight out, not forgetting that it is a round shape. So I've been using the large side of my comb on the other side, so I'm going to use the large side of my comb on this side. So I have an equal tension, hopefully equal result. So just a nice connection in here with the back. And again. Checking the hair, see how the hair is falling, looking at my shape on both sides, looking nice. And carry on removing what I don't need and then moving on to the next section.
and keep it all slightly. And I'm moving towards almost my last section. So there's one section here before last. And finally, my last section. So I'm here, remove what I don't need, grab the hair towards me. So now this is important, I'm gonna move the doll, always facing, you know, very important, facing the work that we are doing to have a much better control and view of our shape. So, I'm check the shape now. See how it's falling. It's got a really nice movement here. I can see the weight line is a lot higher. I didn't want a weight line lower. I wanted a weight line quite high. So now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna cross check. Like the same, making sure everything's nice and clean. And move around the head. So now what I'm going to do is, this is solely because of the density of the hair here. I'm going to show you this by taking the doll head with me. What you've got here is a very strong density point. So in here, there's about 10 times hair more, much thicker. So in here, this is why it makes this area a little bit thicker here. So, once you've got a situation like this, on dolls or on real person, sometimes it's, you can have area of very thick. So in here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift this area ever so slightly. And I'm going to remove the corner at the top. So I'm going to lift the hair this way. Now this is going to face me. I'm going to bring the head straight. I'm going to lift the hair all up. And what brings this weight is just that little corner here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up and I'm just going to remove that angle. It's so just at the top here. This is really going to help to create some softness 
when the shape is falling. And now here I'm going to bring everything up and I'm just going to remove the corner where I see it. So this is not something that was supposed to be part of the shape, but just as I saw the hair and the way it processed, it's much nicer to remove it technically than actually remove it after by point cutting or using thinning scissors where I can add some text and technique to it. Yeah, I think that's a lot better. I'm gonna move towards the other side. And all the way to the end. So you see, this is very much just to cut this very slight angle. Okay, so now what we're going to do is at this stage we're going to cut the side areas. So we're going to start cutting with the shorter side. So we're going to grab the hair, and bring all the hair down. This is a length that is going to sit where the actual higher part of the cheekbone is. So now I'm going to move the doll towards this side so you'll be able to see it a lot more. I'm going to lift the doll higher. In here, I'm going to do this section into two sections, no more. Grab the hair here, bring that into the front area, careful with the red hair. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check where the cheekbones are. This is quite a short section, so I'm going to pre-cut it if I need to have a little bit less of hair with me. And I'm going to check the cheekbone area here, okay? So cheekbones around this way. Oop, lots of little hair. I'm going to bring and take the fine side of the comb, bring it down, bring the hair actually to the comb here with the help of the scissors and then I'm going to create a straight line. Now this is hard to do for me because I don't want to be in the actual sight of the phone and the camera. So that's the first one. Then the second one, I'm going to cut it with the finger to have a little bit more tension and bevel to the shape. So if I bring a little bit more tension to the shape, what's going to happen is I'm going to create a light elevation from the other side. So it means that it's the beginning of building weight, but the hair goes in. So when you see here, it's got a little bit more of a softness as it falls into the side, okay? So this is my first short area on the side. You see, it's not connected at all with the other side. It's a totally different shape. We will see why after, okay? Then now, I'm gonna go from the other side and this one here is a lot longer. So this one here is more to touch the jawline or slightly around the jaw area. So in here what I'm going to do first is I'm gonna grab the hair. First of all, I'm gonna put some water. I'm going now to locate where I want to put the hair. So you see one side, it's actually quite short, top of the cheekbone. The other side, you know what? Let's go around the lip, I think, not too, too long. So I'm gonna grab the length here, go around the lip area. So what, let's do jaw to start with. So I've got a little bit of length to be able to play it, to play with afterwards. So I cut everything into one go here. So 
this is just to determine my length, okay? And now that I have my length, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of the weight in that area. So how am I going to do this? Well, very simply by lifting the hair of that section. So I'm grabbing the section here. I lift it up and I'm going to remove that cord. So this is allowing me to remove weight internally but leaving some length externally. So it helps even more the hair to go inside. And this is I'm going to do all the way around. Again, no over direction. Everything is cut on base. By lifting the hair quite high, we make sure that we always maintain the length in our perimeter. Gonna stand in the opposite direction. And now I'm gonna lift this area here. And I'm just going to make sure it's just nice and clean between my fingers. So, what we've done, we carried on same section from the center moving into the side okay the angle here was not going any lower but it kept quite the same so going quite high so here it builds more weight towards the crown area and not towards the occipital area then we had a little bit of a weight line issue here due to the density of the doll so what we did is we lifted slightly higher and just break the corner and we did that around the top area so it creates a bit more of a softness then towards the sides so the two side areas that we have one was actually kept to be cut longer one was cut shorter so the right hand side here the idea was to go around you know the lip area like kind of like slash jawline and then on the other side was to go more towards the actual high part of the cheekbone. So, before we cut the top area, I'm gonna draw the section again, and then we'll blow dry the back and the side, and then after we look on how we can move and choose the length with the top. So, now what we did is we carried on the actual exact same shape towards the back so creating a lot more density in this area the actual shape in the back and the technique and the section on the higher part of the back remain exactly the same all the way around obviously in here in that area now we did the same on this side I didn't do it earlier because I find it quite difficult to draw like that. See, that is the crap. <laughs> then the side area here, we took one area going towards the cheekbone and then one was going longer almost towards the jawline. The idea of this one here, first section was cut as a line, second section was a dash of elevation. Okay, so a tiny bit of graduation. Then into this side here, the way that we did is we did start with the length first, so no elevation. Then we lifted the hair high to go from shorter towards longer, which left a bit more length 
towards the front. Okay, so this side here is this side. We went with horizontal, uh, a vertical section, and everything went forward. And the idea in terms of length was playing around this area here. Okay, so now let's move on towards the blow dry. Now, this is very important. First of all, I do not blow dry the hair at the end here. Why? Because I'm gonna judge from the length and the weight that's been created on the back and to the side. This is going to be more of a helping my choice of length and shape from the top. So I need to see the process here. So what I need to do first of all is I need to re-wet the hair down a little bit, okay? I don't have to go soaking wet. This is not really uh, a necessity here, but wet enough for the shape to be malleable with the blow dry. Okay, I think what happens sometimes is when the hair starts to dry too quickly, it always goes into a shape. So in here, I don't really want to go into a shape yet. I want to bring the actual shape of the blow dry to the shape of the haircut that I've created. So starting with the water. Once it's done, after we'll do a combo of two different products. The first one, this is the Moist Repair from KMS, the Repair Cream, so this is absolutely gorgeous. I need to bring some moisture into the hair here on the door here, because otherwise if you don't, what ends up happening is it gets very frizzy and you don't really have this control that you want. So this is the kind of, you know, mount that I put. I don't be scared of product, definitely not on a doll head as well because you know specifically here you know all the goldwell and kms range camera silk as well uh, nothing is actually greasy it's got this very very beautiful uh, very very nice type of feel in hair which is more moisturizing than actually heavy which is perfect so i bring i have to be always careful here with the doll head when you work on red because you know with the skin being plastic it can bring a lot of uh, tones of colors into the uh, into the skin then the second part i'm going to utilize a serum so this one here is tim frizz from kms range as well so here again i'm not scared one two three four five pump even six all around the hair. This is what's going to bring a nice coating into the hair, really bring this magnificent shine into the shape. And you need that to have a bit of weight in the hair as well to be able to do your blow dry properly. But very importantly, it has to be a non greasy weight. So, this is why here, you know, KMS range is absolutely perfect for me. And finally, what I'm doing at the end is very, very little of the Moist Repair Living Conditioner. So this is important in here because the Living Conditioner is just going to help to have all those products to kind of blend nicely together. So once it's done, I'm going to bring the hair down. utilize the actual comb here to get the hair together and I'm gonna to start my blow drying technique so I'm gonna get a little bit closer to you here so you can see but the first part I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually wet down my hands and I'm going to clean my hands because what happened is like I really don't like to blow dry when I have a uh, product on my hand because I make makes the brush very slippery. So I remove the actual product from my hands. I'm going to grab one of our flat brush. So here, you know, it's a nine row ceramic vest. You can find many, many different companies. And the idea here is to really go in with the head shape and trying to find the natural volume of the hair, not creating too much volume. So in here, in terms of the blow dry, I'm gonna work without the nozzle to start with. The speed is going to be speed number one, but I'm gonna use a lot of heat. And then I'm gonna start with the head down, 
and I'm going to blow dry the lower part here of the head first. So this is very much like if I was building a wall. I'm going to build it brick by brick from the lower part towards the higher part. Now in here it's very important, what I'm doing is I'm going to move the head and the, sorry, the hair from side to side, but then very importantly is I'm going to change hands as well, because one side you push one way, one side you push the other way, so the hair falls evenly throughout both sides. Most people tend to utilize only one hand when they do blow dry, and what happens is they only give one direction to the hair. I'm really happy with the shape, it starts to fall really well already. So you don't need to be too aggressive at this stage with your blow dry, you know, just moving the hair from side to side should allow it to kind of fold nicely. I'm going to move to the side here. It's important just really looking at where the hair is falling. Then I move the hand on the other side. Now I'm moving the hair in the opposite direction. Shape starts to look quite nice. Of course, it's far away from being finished, but at least we can see the process and how it's going, which is good. And move towards the other side now. So here I really want to bring those area here quite flat so I'm going to really get the hair dryer quite close. You see no, I'm not working with the uh, nozzle of the hair dryer at this stage, that will be later. See so far it's just moving the hair from side to side. So now, I'm going to leave the, the flat brush. I'm going to bring the round brush. This is a, a round brush from Wire Sparks. Very, very good brush. 
and I'm going to get the nozzle of my hairdryer. So the nozzle here is going to help me to add more heat and intensity of air in smaller areas. So this is why here I can really flatten the shape down. The hair goes really nice and flat now in those areas. And now what I'm going to do is just giving a very, very slight rounding. You know, this is gonna help to give a beautiful finish into the hair. This is something that, you know, I got taught when I was a, a younger hairdresser back in the day in France, you know, everybody had to blow dry with a round brush and I think this is uh, very interesting because now it's something that I'm using a lot in almost all my work, you know, the mix of understanding how to style the hair as well, you know, alongside understanding of how to cut it. I think the two really goes hand in hand. Same onto the other side. See, I really love the shine and, you know, the way that the shape is going for the moment. It's going to be really, really nice. You know, there is, you know, what I need to do is I need to build the shape slowly, slowly. So I take my time to really see how, you know, everything is, uh, everything is going. No rush at that stage. It's important. been very interesting through the lockdown because I think a lot of uh, persons or companies were really against cutting gold head and obviously because of the lockdown they had to do it and it's very interesting to see uh, you know like different results and, and you know what's the most interesting thing is people who are not used to cut gold head realize very quickly that it's not as easy as they thought right it's actually quite difficult you need to be very, very aware of where to sit your shape because, you know, depending on length, it's very difficult to, to dry, you know, so there's a lot of criteria that, uh, that comes in hand. Now I'm gonna bring this one here towards the front. So I'm moving hands here, because now I really need to push the hair towards the front area.
Nice. Okay, so let's see the shape that we have a little bit for now. So I'm going to bring that slightly higher so you can see. A really, really cool shape. Looks really nice. So this side here is a little bit longer to start with. Okay, then we've got the flatter area at the back. You can see it's very flat here, but the weight is more towards the actual crown. And then you've got the side here, this is much shorter. So now, let's have a look at what we want to do with the front area. So here, with the front area, what I want to do is I want to create an actual, almost a shape on shape. Something that's going to go around the eyes area and then going down. So in here, it's going to be quite um, essential for me to really check where everything is going and how I want to sit my shape. So my first thing is to isolate really, really well the underneath areas. Why do I do that straight away? This is because I don't want to have any problem in terms of once I start cutting to basically have a difficulty with not knowing where I am because I'm cutting one part too short or one part too long. Okay, so in here it's super super important. So I'm gonna grab the hair this way. Get this here. Now what I'm going to do here as well because it's a very very difficult otherwise I'm gonna remove some of the weight and the length because otherwise it's not really going to work here. So, grab the hair. See all that length that I have. I'm gonna take all this. And I'm gonna remove here what I don't like. All those little frazzly bits here, this is the one that's very difficult to actually blow dry. So now, I'll grab a few sections. I'm gonna wet down the hair. All the way to the other side. And now I'm gonna work with section going across, yeah? So the section are gonna go with the shape of the haircut I want to create. So in here, I grab the hair this way, and get this here, clip it to the side, bring it down. Now, you see from where I want to go, the actual clip area is exactly where I need to cut. So I'm gonna actually pin it into the other side because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get the flatness here so from here I bring the hair down I look at the length that I want I want it here and then I cut so of course it's totally disconnected from the rest Perfect. And again. Now, of course, what's going to happen is as I'm hitting the front, the section is going to start to go towards the forehead area. So here, carry on. I'm going to stay very low here. I don't want to create any more elevation on something very visory, very heavy. You see that's perfect in terms of the length, it's just below the eyebrows area. And then I'm going to give a tiny bit of over direction, but not so much. Right, you can see here just the ways that 
it goes across. And I'm going to carry on. Be very careful because I don't want here, I'm going to show you in a minute, I don't want here to basically hit the other side and then mess up my section. So I'm going to clean this one up and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. I'm going to clip that on the top. I know it's not super clean, but I don't want to uh, dry up, wet down all the blow dry that I've done. So you see here, my section's going all the way across the other side. A little bit of water. And again. So I'm starting through the side. I remember that I'm on a very low elevation. I'm building something heavy. It is not connected from the back. And from here now, I'm moving to the side. I'll be very careful of my over direction. I don't want to go for something which is extremely heavy. But now we can see the way of how it's going from one side to the other side. Okay, now what I'm doing at this stage, I'm going to get the hair that I have in this area here and I'm going to connect. So now I've got this part, bring it here, I'm going very low again and I connect. So I am totally disconnected from the lower part, yeah? And again. Well, it's been about three times I'm dropping my comb today. And I carry on all the way to the top. And then remove first what needs to be removed here. And then I'm going to do my connection with the fringe. I'm going to like this little difference of length here that you're going to see from the top to that. And I carry on. Oh. See now I'm getting towards a lot of weight in the top. Large side of my car. I'm gonna grab everything. Perfect. So now I have here my shape on shape on this side, but now I need to connect everything through that part. So now I go here, I carry on my 
section going across totally across from the top and starting here through the lower part and I move towards the side so just very very slightly moving across Large side of my comb on this side, connected to that area. And I'm all the way to the other side. So when the hair moves from side to side, there's no little hair anywhere. So let's just check the shape now. And remove those clips. Got a nice little feeling here into the shape. Oh, I'm going to put a little bit more water. So the preparation to the blow dry here is essential, really, really essential. Checking where all the hair wants to go. Grab my flat brush one more time. I need to remember the exact product that was put in place into the lower part. So, started with Moist Repair, the cream. Going really all the way through the hair. get the tank freeze in KMS. Again, I put quite a few, I'm not scared. I like to put product with my hand. A lot of people like to put it through the comb, but for me, I really like to feel the hair when I'm doing it. And to, to be honest, it's not any right or wrong. It's just, you know, uh, it's just a personal feeling on this one. And once I'm done, I'm going to go with the leave-in from Moist Repair as well. This is going to even out all the product areas. So, I'm going to clean my hand first. Same purpose as before. That if I do not do that, my hand's quite slippery. And you're going to see the blow dry now it's quite a job because we need to really really flatten the hair you know and bring the hair really where we want to put it so now i'm going to bring the hair down i'm going to check where the hair wants to fall it's very interesting i have not done shape like this for years so it's quite cool actually i'm enjoying it 
Now, again, same thing. Speed number one, maximum heat. Now I really need to push the hair so it falls really evenly, but I'm gonna really look at the growth of where the hair wants to fall naturally as well, because if I push it in the way where it doesn't wanna go, it's gonna be really, really difficult. I'm going to move the hair from side to side exactly from what I did on the underneath, yeah? So, I'm moving it around now. Now I move it towards the opposite direction. The hair starts to fall quite well. I can see the length here. Dual length that I have, which is nice.
absolutely adore the shine that there is with that color, sublime. To the other side now. Absolutely loving the shine. So cool. Blow drying now the front area. I need the hair to be able to move every way. Once I've finished, or almost finished, with the blow dry, I'm going to go back with the flat brush a little bit. This is important to be able to really remove the hair from side to side. I don't want the shape to be too stocky, you know. I just want something to kind of give a little more of movement, so this is really going to help.
which is quite nice. One final part. This is a larger vest brush with quite strong bristle. This is just to leave a little bit of a final smoothness here into the ends. Once I've kind of seen and noticed where the hair wants to go. And then I'm going to get towards the outline now. Bringing the definition to the shape, looking where I want to style it and why. Talking about this a little bit. See if there is some areas that need softening or some areas that needs to be strengthened. And of course the product that I'm going to utilize during all those processes. You see, the drying process is extremely important. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the shape and let's see what needs to be done in terms of refinement. So this is what I have so far. So let me get rid of this. So got a nice shape through the side. I've got this length going shorter to longer. A little bit more length here. And then I've got the shape at the back. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna soften the back area here because I always feel that there is a tiny bit too much of weight when it gets to the lower part here because of the density of the doll. So in here I'm going to lift the hair that helps me to see as well my shape here of my graduation and in here really just breaking into this part very very lightly. I'm not destroying the shape, I'm just keeping it so it's slightly softer. Same here, wherever I need it. So here a little bit more into the side. See, the, the shape is technically correct, but it needs a little bit of lightness because it's very dense on the top area. Same here towards the side. Perfect. Now I'm gonna to get towards my disconnection here, so I'm not gonna to touch this. This is the front. Perfect. Now it's a lot softer into the back, there's no problem with any of those areas going down. So it's very soft just the way it falls here, it's got a nice softness throughout, so I'm happy with that. Perfect. Just gonna grab just a tiny little piece of hair here. So 
So now, let's see what I want to do with the actual outline and the shape. So I'm going to bring a little bit more sturdy to start with. Get that a little bit higher. I need to check the shape, and in here, what it tells me is that I need to work a little bit more on my blow dryer because this is some areas are a little too straight. So I'm going to go back with a hair dryer. It's just that area here needs to be a little bit more softened with the blow dryer. is getting a bit softer now, much nicer. You can see when the hair needs a little bit more love in a blow dryer, you have to go with it because, you know, if you leave it, uh, you know, it's just not going to look right, you know, it's not, it's not like a magical wand at the end that's going to make something suddenly look right. So if something looks wrong, go back to it and do it again or add a little bit more effort into it. Yeah, I think this is a lot nicer. Now, same for here, just so it was a little bit too straight. So, I'm going to go back. And finally, this area here in the side is a bit more softening on the blow dry. And I think after that, we should be ready for the outline. Perfect. So, before I do the outline, I'm going to go and work with the spray. So in here I'm going to use KMS, I'm going to use the firm hold spray, I'm going to place everything into the shape that I want prior than cutting the outline. This is a very, very important actual way of working when you work with doll head, because a doll head, you know, actually the hair will never move. You know, once it's tied into one shape, she's not going to go out and wander around like a normal person. She's a doll head, right? So I think in here it's important not to kind of think that more you're going to make the hair move too much, more you're going to have complication because you need to do it again and again and again. So in here, I'm just checking where the hair wants to go. I'm just looking at the shape. And then once it's done, I'm starting to utilize the spray to start to fit in, into the shape that I want to create. This is prior than doing the outline. And this is, I mean, for me, is a very, very important factor. Because if I don't do that, I found it extremely difficult because the hair always go back into a different shape, right? So, I'm gonna grab here the brush, see where the hair wants to fall here into this area. So I'm gonna bring it into the front. So it's quite nice here. Now, this part there, I really, really like the movement that he does. So I'm gonna actually enhance it a little bit. I'm gonna now see if i push it how or what is going to happen if i like it i keep it if not i do it again no problem yeah do you know what i kind of like it 
it's kind of nice going slightly to the side here. So I'm gonna So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the aircon. Now, let's see the outline. So I'm going to come quite close here to show you what I want to do. I want to create some shape which is a little bit bolder, right? So I'm going to get it quite high in here so for me I can see nicely. I want to really create some nice sharpness into the shape. So I'm going to come through here and look, clippers. And I'm going to just cut. Now this clip is really lovely, it's from a friend of mine called Robert from E-Blade. Beautiful clippers actually, really really nice. From the UK as well, so really good. It's nice to do some collaboration with uh, people with the same country. I think it's so important specifically with what happened with, you know, COVID-19 and so on and so on. So once I'm happy with my line, straight away I'm going to seal it, right? And I seal the line because otherwise it's going to move again. You know, a lot of people always like, you know, talk about what you do with a, um, how do you say, like utilizing, uh, uh, Photoshop or on any of those things, but you know, if you really work nicely with with the point of your blade and and the um, and the clippers, you know, you can get quite close to create a really really nice and clean line. So this is the first part, a nice little clean line to the side. Now I'm going to move here into the side area. So this one is a lot longer. Right now, what I want to do here is I want to push it more towards the front. So, actually, to create this is going to be much better for me to start working with my fringe. So, in terms of my fringe, again, I'm going to bring and start with the clippers. Go down a little bit. Up. And I'm going to move to the other side. So this is the difficulty sometimes with the clippers. It's with the doll is to be able to go right into the doll, so it's very, very difficult. So this is why in here we need to kind of work with half of the scissors and half of the clippers.
need to clean up the front a little bit. So I'm just going to turn the shape to me because I find it very difficult to see otherwise. Pop, let me get the shape here. Okay. Well, I know you're going to cut a lot of those things, but it's warm in here, oh my god. Okay. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this side here and then from the side I'm going to join the other part at the back, creating a bit more of a stronger outline shape. So in here, I really like this little area here of length. I'm going to bring that up a little bit more. And then here I'm going to start to curve the shape in here. So I come this way and from this part Curve the shape and go lower to reach the other side. So I check I really don't want here to cut anything of the actual um, hairline. I think when you cut the hairline, the gold hair, it doesn't look very nice. Bring this down, check how the shape is going. And then with my clippers now, I'm going to move and sharp up the angle. Clean up the shape. So now you start to see you know how the shape is processing on the side, which is quite nice. It's got a lovely little roundness to it. And I'm going to move towards the final part, which is here. Oh. So it's always a little bit of a dance with a verb mix with using the clippers, using the scissors, using the spray. So I need to see what I want to go. I think I'm just going to create something a little bit more curved here. So I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm going to come from the point in the back, go up, and then just give a slight rounding here into the shape. So they're going up and then just moving across. And we need a tiny bit of spray first.
the spray is such an important part to be able to set everything into shapes. Then using the clippers. So you see now, with this really cool, you know, nice shape at the back, just bring a little bit more of a structure to it. And finally now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to just get the two shape together here. So this I'm going to utilize the clippers. It's got a nice little connection now into the side. Just going to do a little bit of that's it, that's better. Quite nice, almost there. Idea here in terms of the fringe, I wanted to go from shorter to longer. All the section was cut here, going down with the head shape and we just pull it down then down but over directed to one side a little bit so it gets longer and longer onto the other side shape is going down this way so we went all the way down to the shape okay so we did the back from center to the side, all round. All the back area was a round shape. We did the same towards the upper part of the back. We actually over directed everything towards the back area, but with a shape that is actually quite a high angle. It's not a very low, very flat graduation, it's slightly higher. Then the idea with those two areas here on the side is, one was cut with over direction going longer, lower, towards the lip and then the other one everything down a little bit of over the of elevation to create more around the cheekbone area okay so that's the first part then we blow dry the hair and we moved on to the fringe area where into the fringe area you have all the section was actually going from one side towards the other side so we were going with the head and all the hair was over directed 
towards this side. So this created length into the other side. Goldwell, what we've used was Top Chic 7RR at RR, that's the color. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through and we can look at how the shape is basically now and we do a little rotation. Thank you everybody, thank you Dom, thank you the whole team, I hope you've enjoyed the show. I've had a fantastic time doing that haircut for you. I mean, it's very, very warm this afternoon with the hottest day of the year. What a great idea I had to do it on that day, but I thoroughly enjoyed myself. So working with Goldwell Top Chic 7RR at RR for the actual color to keep this really punchy, beautiful redness. And in terms of the styling products, I went for KMS and Goldwell Jewel Senses. So the idea here is to create a flatter graduation a heavier graduation towards the front and then a slight asymmetry towards the side. Some of the looks that we've done in 2012. I hope you've enjoyed it. Precision Cutting for Everyone, which is our online education, will be open from September 1st. And the men's side, which would be called Barbering Without the Bullshit, is ready for 2021. So have a fantastic evening. Thank you again for having me. See you soon. Thank you.